was brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves, and the momraths outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jubjub bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the manxome foe he sought, so rested he by the tum-tum tree, and stood a while in thought. And, as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, frabjous day, kaloo, kalay, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borogoves, and the momraths outgrabe. This is probably one of the most famous nonsense poems ever. It's actually part of a novel, Through the Looking Glass, which was the follow-up to Alice in Wonderland. It's part of a book that Alice takes up from a table and is printed backwards. First thing, she thinks it's a foreign language and then says, this is a looking glass world and this is a looking glass book. So she, she picks it up and holds it to the mirror and reads it, reads it that way. Because of the very surreal subversive way of looking at things that this novel encourages, it's often seen to contain a lot of satire. In this period, there were actually a lot of poems about the court of King Arthur, princesses, dragons being slain. It was very popular to hark back to this sort of medieval period. And in a lot of ways, Jabberwocky can be seen as a comical or satirical version of this sort of poem. It's got the narrative of the young boy going out to slay the mythical beast but it doesn't take it at all seriously. It's a narrative, a great story. You know, you picture the, the hero and you know what the place is like. You can almost smell the Tulji wood. Um, and, of course, there's a happy ending. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, frabjous day, Kalu Calais, he chortled in his joy. We can get a lot of fun out of this and a sense of what it's about because so many of the words are similar to our own or have a sound that we somehow can tell what it means from that sound. A good example of this is slithy. Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. When we hear it, we can imagine something sort of slippery and unpleasant and sly. I particularly like that the tove is a species of badger. They had smooth white hair, long hind legs, if you can picture such a thing. Um and short horns like a stag, and they lived on cheese. Gimble is also a word where you automatically have a sense that it's a sort of jolly, jaunty action, as it were, because it's like gamble and nimble, and you sort of feel like you know what that is. And the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. It's almost like, by mixing two words together, Carol's filling in gaps in the language that you didn't know existed before. Beware the jubjub bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. Nonsense poetry is only sort of interesting or sticks if it, in some sense, follows the patterns of our normal language. It's got nouns, verbs and adjectives where he's made up the words. So when, it, when you get a line like, and the momraths outgrabe... All mimsy were the borogoves and the momraths outgrabe. The raths are the creatures, presumably. Mom is the description of the raths. These are raths who are mom, and outgrabe is what they did. A lot of poets have a great gift for language and use very difficult words, and often, as a reader, you find it very difficult to... Oh, what does it mean? I don't know. You're distanced from the poem. Here, almost every word you don't know, but that doesn't mean... That actually draws you in to the poem, I think. 
One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. There are a couple of words in this poem which look like ordinary words, words we use all the time, uh, galumphing, say, and chortled. Um, but they're placed in the poem in such a way that you might think that these are some of these uh, uh, invented words uh, of his. In fact, they are. If you look in the Oxford English Dictionary, the first usage of these words is in this poem, Jabberwocky. The actual name of the beast, the Jabberwock, is very interesting because Jabber sort of means excitable talk. And in a letter that he wrote to a school who wanted to call their paper Jabberwocky, Lewis Carroll actually says that Wocka is from an Anglo-Saxon word and it means fruit of or um, the offspring of. So he's the offspring of excitable talk. And you could almost say that all nonsense language is that. It's talk getting so carried away with itself, it almost becomes a nonsense. 